Oliver Otis Howard swiftly rose through the ranks of military service during the Civil War, having graduated from Bowen College in 1850 and West Point in 1854. Howard was well prepared to serve the Union during the Civil War onset. In May of 1861, he was made Colonel of the 3rd Maine Volunteer Infantry, resigning his regular Army commission. Later that fall, Howard was promoted to Brigadier General. He commanded a brigade at the First Battle of Bull Run, and though driven from the field in confusion, was promoted to Brigadier General that fall. Howard showed his tactical powers at the Battle of Fair Oaks on June 1, 1862. Howard became a Medal of Honor recipient after leading the 61st New York Infantry in a charge at Fair Oaks, Virginia, where he was twice severely wounded in the right arm, an injury that had to have his arm amputated later on. Howard helped fortify East Cemetery Hill on July 1, 1863, during the three-day Battle of Gettysburg. Around noon, General Winfield Scott Hancock consolidated the intermingled Union regiments, and Howard recognized the strength of this position. Howard chose Cemetery Hill to serve as his headquarters for the 11th Corps. Under his command, the hill was divided into small pastures and bordered on all sides with stone walls. Additionally, artillerymen constructed barricades on the hill to protect their cannons. By the morning of July 2nd, East Cemetery Hill was one of the most heavily fortified positions on the field. The following day, Confederate General Robert E. Lee ordered Lieutenant General Richard Yule to convert the demonstration into a full-scale attack if the opportunity arose. At 4 p.m., Yule launched an artillery barrage from his guns stationed on Banners Hill, but Union cannons on East Cemetery Hill and Culp's Hill converged fire upon the Confederate artillery on Banners Hill and decimated the Southern cannoneers. The tide turned in favor of the Union, and Gettysburg Campaign ended in a Union victory on July 3, 1863. After the war, Howard helped fund Howard University. He died in October of 1909 in Vermont, where he is buried in Lakeview Cemetery.